Hello and welcome back to the 3D Amateur channel. Today I was supposed to be doing the Raspberry Pi upgrade and I already had the Raspberry Pi and was halfway through printing the case that was going to attach to my Ender 3. However, I recently ran into an issue. While printing part of this case, my printer decided to stop halfway through. It had a nozzle clog and as expected, I cleared it and it seemed to be fine. Then for some reason it started over extruding and I haven't been able to fix it. So rather than doing a Raspberry Pi video with a badly printed part, I figured that I would do a maintenance episode. So today we're going to completely dismantle and rebuild the Ender 3 and we're going to replace some parts on there. So we have some replacement silicone ends, we have some replacement tubing, some replacement running wheels and a replacement hot end. We're going to use all of these and we're going to strip down, clean and rebuild the Ender 3. So the first thing to do is to pull it out of the enclosure and get it in a more usable space. So once I've done that, I will reposition the camera and I will join you there. Okay, so I've managed to create some space in, uh, in my office or on my desk and we're going to start with by dismantling or removing, I should say, all of the additional extra pieces that we don't need. So they will go to one side and things like filament roller there, all of them will pop to one side, the easy to remove items. Things like the drawers, which we are gonna need the tools from, and things like the bed. Now with this being unplugged, the stepper motors should be able to be moved, but you want to move these slowly as they do generate electricity and they could damage the board. So that we will just wash with warm soapy water before it goes back on. And now we can remove the bed. I think pretty much the rest of this is going to be quite long-winded and quite not that way around, um, and quite uninteresting to be honest. Um, so what I will do is I will continue to dismantle and I will see you on the other side, although I will pause if there's any interesting note points that are worth talking about. So I'll continue with my dismantlement and I will see you on the other side. So the main reason that I removed these uh, wheels on the bottom of here and I'm going to be replacing them is if you look in there you can see the wear and tear from the wire axis movement and this also gives you lots of uh, dust and stuff in there as well and this can cause inaccuracy in the prints um, along the Y axis. So. That's one of the reasons I'm going to be replacing them. And they're all pretty badly grooved actually. So yeah, definitely worth replacing. Right, let's continue on by removing the x-axis. And the way that we're going to, and the z-axis actually, and the way that we're going to do that is we are going to remove bolts in the top and then unplug the stepper motor and uh, the switches and everything from here and then we're just going to lift this whole thing up right off the top. So let's get started with that. Oh yeah, so now that we have the uh, z-axis and x-axis completely removed, uh, what we'll do is we'll remove the, it doesn't roll away, uh, we'll remove the hot end um, which basically we'll do by removing this whole assembly here off of the end here and then we can take this apart to replace some of these wheels as well. Now it's probably wise to remove the extruder and the stepper motor holding this so then we'll have full access to uh, the x-axis bar so let's crack on with that. And there we are so that's one of the stepper motor drivers which has the uh, 
gear there that will turn the gear in there, which turns the gears inside to push the filament through. So let's pop that to one side. So the inner wheels on this side do appear to, to need replacing. So you can see a lot of um, wear and tear around here. You can actually see the plastic uh, starting to break off there as well. The inner wheels, however, appear fine. So I think we'll keep that. We'll replace these two and we'll keep the inner one as is. And it looks to be the same on here as well. The outer wheel there, it's obviously got a lot of uh, wear. As does that one, but the inner wheel does not have anywhere near as much wear. So that actually tells me that this is pulling too much in if the outer wheels are wearing and the inners aren't. But I'm not sure there's going to be any way for me to fix that, to be completely honest with you. So, replace them two, replace them two, replace the bottom four, and I think we should be good on the wheel front. The next thing I want to do is remove the hot end. Um, so we're going to have to remove the additional uh, Aperture Science bullseye duct there and then to gain access to the hot end inside then we're going to remove this and replace it with the nice new one we've got and the x-axis wheels actually don't look too bad the bottom one has got a little bit of rubbing but it doesn't look like it's actually indented yet and the same with the top ones so I think they should be good as I say, there's no spurs or anything or bits of plastic that are coming off, um, but it won't be too long before they'll be worth replacing as well. So the hot end is just attached by these two bolts here. So as soon as we undo these, we'll release it completely from the X axis carriage. And there we go. So now we'll need to snip these and get rid of this entire set of Capricorn tubing, the um, hot end and the silicone cover there as well. So just simply a lovely pair of flush cutters. And we also need to run all of the cabling from in here back through this and to get all of this out so let's get that disconnected from there and let's get this open now we are going to have to remove the cabling from the cable chain but luckily this cable chain works really easily by just press fitting or press clipping all of these into here and the same with all of these front pieces as well And there we go, so that is the cable released. So let's feed this one back around here. So that's for the stuff motors, we'll get that out of the way. And then all we need is for 
these cables come back through. So there we go. Right over there. We will uh, we'll keep hold of this. It's always nice to have an emergency hot end if I need one. Um, probably should have cleaned it all out and all the rest of it first, but it is what it is. I'm going to leave it as is. And pop that away for safekeeping. So before we go any further, I'm just going to tidy up the workstation because there's a lot of pieces everywhere and I don't want anything to get lost. So, one thing I always try to do is screw everything back in to where it needs to go or keep it within the holes of where it needs to go. That way nothing should get lost and it should be a simple case of just popping stuff back together. So things like these four screws, I'm going to go and put back in the top of here for now. Just so I know what they are, where they are, and they don't get lost. So the next thing I want to do is I want to start cleaning. And to do that, I'm going to get a couple of wipes and some alcohol. And we're just going to go over all of the axes where the wheels run. Hopefully without ripping the pads. And you can see immediately it's already getting off loads of dirt and dust and grime. So I'm going to run through and clean the rest of this and I'll join you on the other side. So with all of the alcohol cleaning done for all of these areas, the next thing to do is some just general cleaning, uh, dusting, etc. So again, not particularly interesting, but vital. Um, as you can see, all of these pieces that have come off are all bits of dust, broken filament, um, all sorts. So we need to look after our things and as such, well, dust. While we have easy access to these as well, I'm going to move the eccentric nuts all the way to the outside. So what that will do is it will move the wheel further away from the center. And then, and then we can tighten them up when we put everything back on. There we go, so that's in the furthest away position. And then when we come to putting everything back together, we'll tighten these up to match the tension that we need on the rollers. So for those of you wondering what eccentric nuts are, they are these nuts here. So when these are rotated, you can see they are actually off axis. So if I pull this off of here, and you can see there, that particular nut does not spin around a center. So what this means is that when this, this piece at the top here goes into a hole and it is moved, it will move this axis around. So it will move it around that point, which just gives it a little bit of extra tightening or loosening on the running of the uh, of the X, Y, and Z carriages. In fact, let's do this next because all of these are going to be replaced. So let's do that now. All right, so now we have everything disassembled. Um, what we need to do is assemble everything again. So the first thing I'm gonna do is organize all of the desk get rid of all of the, the rubbish, the little um, cable ties, get everything together that we need for the reassembly, and then I will, uh, I will come back to you then. So I'll see you in a moment. Now that the disassembly and cleaning is finally complete, and we have replaced all the parts that we wish to replace, it's going to be time to assemble. So I have replaced the outside running wheels for the Z-axis, I have replaced all four wheels for the y-axis and I've replaced the top two running wheels on the x-axis. I've also cleaned with warm soapy water the bed so that's ready to go back together. 
We have removed the hot end and we have the replacement ready to go. So that is waiting in the wings right here. And I've also pre-prepared the correct bit of, uh, the well, correct length of tubing. And I already had the 3D printed part for Luke's hot end mod. I will leave a link to that in the description if you wish to do that yourself. But basically, we'll, we'll, we'll see when we come to it. And I'll talk through it then. Uh, we've also got some new Capricorn tubing ready to go. So that's off to one side. And everything else has been cleaned, tidied and tightened. So now it's just a case of assembling. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the Z-axis carriage. Now I have removed the Z-axis uh, for cleaning as well. So that's all nice and clean. And we'll just pop that back in. And that will slot into there, screw tied up there, and then we'll start progressing on to reassembling the whole carriage. So I'll see you on the other side of that. So with the carriage now being fully assembled, we will place it back over the top, let it run down and replace the top bar, which is actually just out of camera shot. So let's slide this on. So now that the Z carriage and X carriage are assembled, we're going to put on the top piece and I'll raise the camera slightly for this. So just up here, we'll remove these screws that we put in to remember where they went and how they went. And then we can re-add the top bar. There we go. So now that's all nice and tight. What I would like to do is just tune the wheels quickly. Now, the way that we do this is using them eccentric nuts. And if I can move this round this way slightly. Actually, I'm probably better off seeing it in this way. So if I move that out of the way there, the wheel that we have here now at the moment that is actually tight not really tight I can move the wheel if I really put some effort into it but there's no looseness there at all and the same applies on the left hand side so I can move the wheel if I really wanted to but there's no actual other movement so that's perfect that's exactly what we want we just don't want any wobble anywhere and we don't want it to be able to slide or move without actually pressing against that. Now, this outside wheel here is freely movable. So that means we do need to tighten this eccentric nut a little bit just to pull that all together and stop the outside wheel moving there. The two outside wheels on this side are perfectly fine. So this side we're happy with, this side we need to tighten slightly. And the way we do that is just spanner, and then move it move it a little bit more and there we go so now we've got that tight it's still got a little bit of wobble to it it's got a little bit more there we go perfect so now that's all tight and one of the main reasons that we want to make sure especially this end is tight is that you will end up with um droop from the hot end going over to this side. Obviously this is a bar with two moving pieces so if this hot end is all the way over here that's going to have, um, especially if you do a direct drive mod then this is going to be heavily weighted so you don't want that to move or at least move the minimal amount when the hot end goes to either side. So now that we have, double check, these axes sorted we now need to do the same thing with this. So if you can hear that, but there is a little bit of wobble there. So we want to kind of eliminate that. And exactly the same principle again. Got an eccentric nut on this bottom wheel, so we'll just move it. And the wobble's actually got worse. That's fine. Keep moving. And there we go. So that is now non-existent so let's loosen that a little just because we don't want it to pinch we just want it to 
There we go, so there's a little bit of wobble again. There we go. So nice linear movement, no wobble. Perfect. So with all of them set, I'm going to move this back up out the way. And then we could do with getting the bed on, but I think it's going to make more sense for us to get the hot end attached so we can run the wiring for it into here to get this all closed up before we put the bed back on. So let's get the hot end attached. Now with this hot end, um, it does come with the uh, Capricorn tubing, which we're not going to use. And while it is open, and while I can show you quite easily, um, we'll do Luke's hot end mod. So to do this, let's move this kind of slightly this way and back down again so you can actually see what I'm doing. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove the Bowden tube couple of that. Now traditionally what would happen is the Bowden tube would go through the coupler, it would go straight down to the very bottom. Now this works absolutely fine, but if there happens to be a, um, like the Bowden coupler comes loose a little bit, or you haven't pushed it in enough, filament will feed into a gap at the bottom, and then that can leak out of the sides and it can cause blockages. So the idea from Luke's hot end mod is that you print a tiny little piece that looks like this and you cut an exact piece of tubing. Now this Capricorn tubing is going to slide into here. Then this 3D printed cover goes over the top and that has a little uh, kind of cone into it. So then when we reattach the Bowden coupler, and tighten it up. So you know it won't tighten all the way like it did before. And the reason for that is it's pushing down on the, the plastic, which is pushing down on the Capricorn tubing, which is in turn pushing against here. Now what this means is that you no longer have to worry about this, this Bowden fitting, game coming loose or it not connecting properly, because now all of the hot end area is fully pressed against each other. And then that just stays in there then when you attach your Bowden tube, it presses against the 3D printed part in here. And even if it doesn't exactly match up, it will then push the filament through. So if we just take this off again real quick, now that that's been pushed into place, you can see, or might be able to see, that it is almost perfect. So let's tighten that back up and then we'll get this attached to the printer. At this point you also want to make sure that this is actually straight as it does have a little bit of play. So before we do the final tightening. or at least as straight as can be. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Ender 3 isn't a precision instrument as such, but through little tweaks like this, we can make it more precise and print better. Right, so now we need to attach the cooling and I've dismantled this partially. So what we're going to do is there's a screw that goes in here and this one that goes in here and this will slide over the hot end like so. So this is the bullseye duct uh, that is a replacement for the stock Ender 3 uh, cooler. which isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but this one just looks a bit cooler and does a bit better. Now, we have this fan on. The 
blower fan is attached into here and you can see the bullseye branding on the back there and then that will blow into the bottom of here through the channels in here and then out of here and here so this will be adjusted once everything else is assembled but for now actually we need to get this wiring out of the way first so let's do that so this all comes up the side here Yeah, and the side here is completely adjustable for height. So once we get it all sorted, we'll be able to adjust that um, once everything is back together, print bed and everything else. So now all of that is assembled, we really need to sort out the wiring. So all of this wiring does need to be fed back through our uh, lovely cable management system here, and then fed back around to the back of here to then be wired back in here so let's get all of this through here wired in and i will come back to you when that is done right so everything is now wired back in i do apologize that you missed a lot of that i forgot i tilted the camera up to look at these and hadn't tilted it back down but believe me you didn't miss much um, i've fed all the cable back through this cable holder back into here and just screwed everything back in and plugged everything back into the main board. So now we need to replace the cover for this and this just needs to plug into the fan socket before it goes on and there we go. That can then sit on there and we can screw everything back in starting with the back screw because we have the fan silencer to go back on here. So we need to pop this back on, but it's definitely uh, interesting going back through these old pieces and seeing, um, so for example, you can see there, there's a lot of under extrusion. Um, obviously I didn't understand the printer very well and I was just printing bits and pieces. So this is definitely something we will need to do a reprint on at some point, but it does the job that it needs to do, which is to silence the uh, the fan and to prevent any dust and debris getting into there as well. So, for now, it is perfectly adequate. Now that we've got all this done, I think the next thing is going to be putting the bed back together by the looks of it. So this is all attached now, and even without the uh, eccentric nut tightening, this actually has a really nice nice grip to here there's no uh, wobbliness left or right which is really nice and there's no movement uh, like twisting at all so let's get the belt attached before we do anything else I'm going to loosen this off as much as I can See that here? Yeah, loosen the. Uh... So I'm going to loosen this off as much as I can, which this is the tightening bolt for the the Y axis. Then I'm going to pull this back and screw these in, so that most of the tension is being done by the arm itself. Then I can adjust this if I need to after it's all tightened and screwed together. So what you should hear is um, a lovely little note from this when you ping it. So at the moment, it's nothing. Once I tighten it, got a little bit, tighten it a bit more, and a bit more. And there we go. So it's got a nice amount of tension there when you hear that that pinging sound. So now we need to attach the bed. And that is going to be done with springs and screws here.
We do also need to take into account the attachment for uh, the cable chain. So that needs to go on this back one here. So let's start with that one. So we're going to have that and that through from here. And then we need to attach the wheel. But before we attach the wheels, what I'll do is I'll go around all the other four and pop the screws and springs on. Because it will then make it easier to do everything else because it'll all be balanced. Now that the hot bed is back on and partially tightened up with the, uh, the screws here, we can just clip the cable chain piece back together. Oh, he says. And I just need to give it a bit more room to manoeuvre. That'll then clip back on there and keep all of our cables tidy. I think the next thing to do is probably going to be to swing this round and attach the stepper motors on the back here. In fact, while we've got it on the front, let's do the belt for the x-axis. Perfect, nice level of belt tension. Right. So now, stepper motors. And probably cable chain. Maybe cable chain first, because it will get everything out of the way. So this goes up into here, then goes into there. And this basically does the same. And then this will hold everything onto here. And we need to add all of these little pieces back in again to keep it all covered. And then the last piece of the puzzle is this, um, but I have accidentally lost the piece that goes in the top of here. So that should go on here. and should have another piece on the top that just kind of holds the last pieces of the cable together before they come out the top. Um, but for now, until we can print another one, that will do. So now, extruder and stepper motor. So this all has to be done in one because the extruder actually screws into the stepper motor over this piece here. So let me slide this down so you can actually see what I'm doing. So yeah, this piece here. So the stuff remote will go underneath. The extruder will go on the top. And then these screws will go all the way through the extruder and down into the stuff motor. Or at the very least they should do. And there we go. So now, now we need to wire all of these up. We're getting closer to completion. So now I need to do Bowden tube. And we need to measure out what we're gonna need at a maximum. So if we have this all the way over here, we want a little bit of room but not a huge amount. So somewhere around there, I think would be more than adequate, which is pretty much half. So let's do just under half of this. And if it is too short, we've then got the other piece to actually make it bigger. So that will just push into there. 
this one or push into here and then we'll use the clips to hold them tight. That does look very long. I think that is too long. Yeah, we definitely need to shorten that. That's a bit better, a bit neater. And then we have these little clips, which will go into here and here, and they will hold the Foden tubes in tight. And there we go. So that is all clicked in nice and tight, holding that in there. And remember, we have the Luke's uh, hot and mod in there. So even if this isn't all the way down to that, it's not a problem. That will go through and this hot end bit at the bottom will be perfectly fine. But it should be nice and solid and good to go. Now we need to do the same thing on this one up here. So just a little clip to slide in and keep that tension on the tube. So the last thing is going to be using a few cable ties just to keep these together so that nothing gets tangled. So I like to do the uh, cables on the top and the Bowden underneath. So let's pop that on there. Not too tight. We want them to hold together, but we also don't want to constrict the, uh, the Bowden tube and constrict the filament. And that should be enough. So let's just give these a, one last little tighten. Like I said, not too tight, but make sure it's enough to hold it properly. And I think we are nearly ready to do a test print. So all we need to do is get this back over to the enclosure, get the bed on it, which I'll do the bed now actually, once I've removed these. A lovely freshly cleaned glass bed. And some brilliant little clips I found on eBay. I was using the Bulldog clips as you know, but they do stick out a fair bit into the, the print bed and they, they do have these bits on the top. So occasionally when I was doing large prints they would actually catch on that, but these, these are brilliant. They're a lot smaller, a lot lower profile, and a lot easier just to click on. And hold everything nice and tight. So, Add all of our little attachments back on. And it looks like we have a fully connected and ready to print Ender 3. So I'll leave all of the tools out just in case, you never know. But let's pop the drawer back in. Let's get everything over to the enclosure and uh, I'll see you over there in a moment. So there we have it. The Ender 3 has been rebuilt, repositioned back into the enclosure and is ready to print. I have leveled all the bed. I've made sure all the Z-axis offset is all set and everything is connected and working. You may also notice one little addition here but I will uh, show you what that is for when we do the test print. So uh, yeah, let's, let's do that and see how everything worked out. So that red switch triggers a DSLR camera to take a photo at every layer, which enables me to put together a much better time lapse using Octoprint. So there we have it. The test print is complete. 
and if we take a closer look at the cube we can see that there's no over or under extrusion the layer lines and the details are looking lovely so i think that was a success so now that the ender 3 is back up and running the next video should be back to our regularly scheduled program and we should be doing the raspberry pi so look forward to that if you did like this video then please click the like button and if you have any suggestions for improvements or anything to add then please post it in the comments below i read every single one of them and try to respond to as many as possible if you do like these videos and would like to see more then hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified of new uploads so thank you for watching and hopefully i will see you next time take care and bye for now